and friends first of all i like to c congratulate akshara foundation i have literally seen them grow when they started 10 years ago i was associated with the karnataka state council for child welfare so we used to have our crushes in the ground and i used to see them starting their amazing growth and then of course i have a personal uh, i have had a friendship with uh, ashok and uh, i think uh, i think they've grown even further and i'm really happy that you're having this program but being amongst you all all of all of whom most of whom are from the education sector will like, come from another world another world of child protection and uh, now that this act uh, and uh, now with the commission for children which also has the responsibility to monitor the uh, the implementation of the act kind of slowly putting my toes on that side also looking into education <laughs> sector especially since complaints have started coming in to the com uh, to the commission on violation of child rights within the commission so basically ha having uh, you know worked initially with implementing one act the juvenile justice act for children that was 2000 and amended again like mr giridhar was saying that uh the act came the raw act came to the uh, child all those those of us who were involved in the juvenile justice system came to us and we had to read between the lines over the lines stretch it try to see how to protect children's rights uh, with using the juvenile justice act and we didn't have proper rules we didn't know how to do it but somehow we started working on it and those are because it's not so clear it's very ambiguous you have a lot of freedom to interpret it as you want and the same thing i'm looking at the rte because now the, the rules are not finalized and i heard what is going to happen in the rules because we refused to be a part of the rule uh, rule drafting committee we said we'll once we finish it the commission will look at it and then we'll see from the protection angle also what is there so i feel there's a lot of scope i'm very optimistic about implementing this rte maybe 10 years down the line we'll have things in place we'll have good outcomes for children but at least we have something going we have unless the eccd section if you look at the eccd we don't have any policy we don't have any laws people can start it anywhere in your bathroom in your back door in your garage anywhere you can start programs for children below 6 at least you have something set in cast of course cast in metal and iron but you have something to work with so let's look at it very optimistically that's how i looked at the juvenile justice act and now after 2000 now it's almost 10 years and i think things are falling into place people know the protection of children's rights is a priority similarly i think people will understand that uh, we have to get this rte moving on the ground government said that from 1st uh, april 2000 it will start getting operationalized the rules are not yet there so i think there is a little teething trouble and don't expect too much to happen for the next 5 years <laughs> if we if we expect too much to happen because if as i said if i conclude my slide i'll tell you that being inside the system now in the commission vision building accountability there are so many things that has to happen within the system we all you know most of us i think represent little ngos micro initiatives where we built all this and we, we our reach is very easy we have a small group group a client group a small universe to touch this is a huge mammoth job and the main thing lacking i saw is vision vision of the functionaries on the ground you and i because you are working in the education sector i in the protection sector a vision has grown with our experience but it does it hasn't happened yet so it will take some time i'm not going to this i'm just i'd like to come to the last line where why this is so important because recently i read what kapil sibel said 70% of our workforce have not cleared primary class exam and only 5 to 7% have skills as opposed to 75% of the developed world look at this just look at the statistics i mean what where can we start where do we begin so this is the kind of thing that government knows that this is this has happened and i think government knows it has happened because our voices are loud activists in the field we are loud we have screamed nafre and all these campaigns have told the government because if you look at the typical bureaucrat who sitting now there in the ministry of hrd or if you look at uh, the gentleman sitting down here today yesterday they were in mines just day before yesterday they were in uh, some infrastructure and then suddenly he's landed up in uh, <laughs> education <laughs> and he has got to implement this act so it's only people like you who can give him that vision build his vision and tell him that this is what we need for our children and to translate that into a law is i think a huge uh, you know effort that they have made so we have to accept that's how the government system works and we've got something to play with to make a difference so uh, i i think all of you are experts i won't say but it's free education is compulsory education 
and special there is something called special pro, uh, pro, provision for disadvantaged child child migrant children child, child labor so they have built in something which you can use you can stretch it you can use your imagination wherever you are to get it and if there are violations now you have the commissions you can always come and tell the commissions national level state level these are this is what is happening and then we can try to intervene and tell the state come on pass this notification get that going and slowly things are happening like for example child marriage there were so many marriages happening lot of complaints started pouring we just told the government that within two months we want you to pass this we want you to do that it's happening because at the bureaucrat level there the ias you have to remember they have, they have come there with a lot of brains so they know what's what's happening they know what's good and they know the general this the, 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 uh, the general you know in the in the community itself there's a lot of unrest so this fellow sitting down there better make that change <coughs> uh, i don't want to go through this i think you're all this but some issues that are because all even though the uh, the state has not come out with the rules what's happening at the commission i'll come up, uh, more about what our rules are we started getting lots of complaints about violation of child rights in schools it can be corporal punishment it can be sexual abuse it can be teacher is not coming school is about 10 kilo 5 kilometers away and uh, there's only one teacher he doesn't come she doesn't come so lots of issues related to uh, uh, running functioning of the school itself here we talked about outcomes even that comes to us now now they're saying that there's no hindi eighth standard onwards you must have specialist teachers nobody is there please this is a violation of child rights please do something about it so these kind of issues are coming and we we we've, we've started asking the state what's happening why is this happening here and if this and if the state doesn't reply then immediately after about a month we issue a notice the moment that notice is issued and we give two weeks time i don't know how that system can work so fast immediately something happens and something comes before the commission so it takes time but the more we hear from society the, the more we hear from parents from civil society i think the commission has a role to play in trying to make some change <coughs> all these are just pra, 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 like uh, it, it is bars corporal punishment mental harassment so all these things like most of us in the commission know it by heart now section 13 to 17 we know if it comes we we'll immediately say you have a section <laughs> section because we are all from the protection most of us are from the protection field except dr niranjan aradhya so immediately we we'll say oh this so you link up edu education with section 13 this is not allowed immediately we'll say we have taken cognizance of this complaint tell us why this happened they have to respond because we have the powers so they have to tell us why it happened why is it not happening change that master uh, 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 initiate a fir because sometimes we get cases with corporal punishment it's it's obvious to see photographs people telling us but they don't file an fir we say no you have to file an fir so something like that are changing we haven't looked so much into curriculum out and they started making me think but then we can't do that you all are there to do that but at least protecting the child and so what are the support services within the rte one is the state government and local authorities you know the local authorities have got, given a lot of powers in the uh, rte they complain redressal within 3 months so actually now what's happening in the commission because they have not named the local authorities this in the act of course it says municipal corporations and all that uh, the rules are being many complaints come directly to us so what we do we call we call the local authority either the beo or the ddpi we just immediately issue a notice to him or call him up and say this is a serious violation please come and explain to us why this has happened the school management committee now karnataka already has a history of this sdmc so there's nothing new here but when we go to the ground when we go on unannounced visits across the state to the different districts we try to look at the registers we can, you know we can ask for any register we can summon anybody we can look at all records we can talk to children etc one of the things the first things that we do is we ask for the sdmc register when did you have your last meeting how much money came here have you used this money have you brought books then we go to the laboratory we see whether it has ever been used many places we've gone to the science laboratory and seen the door was never opened so then we ask them why was this not used so these are the questions that we ask and and i feel you know empowering this sdmc is very important because when we went to dakshina kannada i think without much empowerment training they are already very empowered <laughs> dakshina kannada they only tell us that this is what we are doing that is what we are doing we got 4 lakhs from here we took 2 lakhs from a donor so you know things are happening so maybe an exchange of people from dakshina kannada sdmc members to bagal court or to bijapur or to bidar would make this difference so this is the kind of uh, ideas and we will share with the government we'll say take a group from here take them there let them see come back and let things change on the ground
The other one is the private sector. I'll come to that. Private sector, as you already know, in uh, primary, I think 8% of schools in the country are at the primary level are by the private sector and 12% are at the higher secondary level. So these people have established themselves and if this right to education act, I was just thinking to myself, if it had come some 20, 30 years ago, you would have been able to re regulate him, regulate them. Now they are an established force. So the common school system could not be introduced. Even though many, you know, hardcore people say we should have had a ha common school system, it's not possible. It is like asking Mukesh Ambani to live in a one single floor flat. Will he agree? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just thinking, I was telling, I was arguing with somebody. You're asking somebody who has gone to an international school, who has sent their child to an international school, to go and now send him to a common school. Will they agree? Nobody will agree. You can't, you can't, you're asking for the moon. So let's just accept the fact that this common system will not work. But at least this 25% I feel is a win-win situation. Many journalists and people have asked me, what are these people? They are, you know, this Bethany School, for instance, we issued a notice to them. You know, Bethany School saga, what happened? And we issued a notice to them and all that. So this 25% I feel is a win-win situation for both. For the people who are sending children to that school plus... You know, people who marginalized children who are coming there because our children really don't know that other India. People, many of us ask Venkatesh and ask, all of us who are in the field, we know the deprivation in those homes. Where is the chance for a child to study? Where is the chance for a child to even sleep? Forget the food, everything. There's no space for a child in those margins, especially if you look at slums in Bangalore. We have hundreds of them. So this, this is a real win-win situation. I feel that, and I think that all of us really have to promote it, support those 25% to come there, give them, you know, expose them. I remember in Mangalore Pajna Counseling Center when we took a whole lot of orphan children and put them into group foster homes, what they developed was that during vacations, these orphan children will go with government school children for holidays. So some kind of building, partnering, mentoring, big sisters, small, you know, all those schemes that we have modern.